today, uh, all four speakers uh, talked about Eastern Partnership, its advantages, its lessons, uh, opportunities, and so on. Uh, everything has uh, started in Vilnius, uh, but during Vilnius summit, the association agreement has not been signed, as we know. However, it is close to signature during Greek presidency, and that's why I would like to ask His Excellency, I will try to pronounce your name, George Chatsimetjalakis. Okay, <laughs> George, please. Thank you. Well, it's advisable not even to try to pronounce my name. <laughs> But anyway, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank our four hosts for giving us the opportunity to come together here for such a very important conference. On the other hand, I would like to thank you, the members of the Academia and the representatives of the Commission that have given us so far the first enlightening uh, chapters of what is about to, to follow. So I will restrict myself in a few introductory remarks uh, from the perspective of the uh, rotating Greek presidency of the European, uh, European Council. Greece, as you know, highly appreciates its partners' view on Easter partnership and as the current presidency during a very sensible and volatile international environment, which particularly touches the Easter partnership countries, that means all of us, has spared no effort to promote the common cause in the most feasible way. Easter Partnership, along with the Southern Neighborhood, is part of the broader European Neighborhood uh, policy. It concerns uh, six Eastern European countries, and uh, it was created following a joint Polish-Swedish initiative. Main goal of this political cooperation and the progressive economic integration through the promotion of political and economic reforms which, of course, does not necessarily associate to membership process, but it does not preclude that. The European Commission publishes annual progress reports for each country uh, of, the European, uh, of the Eastern Partnership, and the reports were published back in 2013 and uh, uh, early 2014. The association agreements set the political framework of the cooperation with Eastern partners. The deep and comprehensive free trade area agreements give the possibility of promoting further the commercial relations between the European Union and its partners and creating a secure and a healthy business environment and investors friendly. The summits which establish the guidelines for the course of the Eastern Partnership are organized every two years. It was in Prague, in Warsaw, in Vilnius, and the next one is going to be organized here in, in Latvia. In a series of conclusions of the Foreign Affairs Council in, in uh, May 2014, as well as of the European Council on the March 2014, the European Union has repeatedly condemned the Crimea's annexation and the actions of the armed self-defense forces in cities of Eastern Ukraine and characterized organized referenda as illegal. The European Union has called Russia to repudiate those lawless acts and to with withdraw her armed forces from the Russian-Ukrainian border, whereas it encouraged the self-restraint of the Ukrainian government in its pursuit of re-establishment of order in Eastern Ukraine. In parallel, The European Union supports meaningful Russo-Ukrainian dialogue, including through international multilateral mechanism or mechanisms in which she can also participate, as recently happened during the quartet talks between the European Union, Russia, United States of America, Ukraine in Geneva in uh, the 17th of April of this year. However, The situation in Ukraine continues to escalate and it creates great concerns. 
As a mark of the political support to Ukraine, especially in view of the presidential elections, the political provisions of the association agreement were signed in the margin of the European Council uh, on the 23rd of March. And the rest of the agreement is expected to be signed in the near future. I think that a, a date has been given, it's the 27th of, of June, that means that it will be within the Greek presidency, which is quite a, 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 a let's say, a, a sounding success. We should note that the wording proposed jointly by Germany, France, and Poland, and adopted in the Council conclusion states that the agreement does not constitute the final aim of the cooperation between EU and Ukraine, which in fact implies that Ukraine might aspire to a European perspective. The Foreign Affairs Council of the 17th of April, as the previous ones reiterated the aim of further strengthening the political relations and the progressive financial integration with Georgia and Moldova, affirmed its readiness to sign the Association and Free Trade Agreement in the margin of the next European Council, also the 27th of June, and called on these countries to continue the reforms. As for Azerbaijan, negotiations are proceeding slowly, as from one part, the Azeri side does not wish to have a legally binding text, especially when it comes to dealing with issues of democracy and human rights, and from the other part, it advances daring wording concerning the territorial integrity in order to promote its position on Nagorno-Karabakh. As for Armenia, European External Action Service is inclined to propose to the Armenian side the use of the provisions included in the draft of the association agreement, negotiation of which was completed uh, just before Armenia swiftly changed its mind and turned to Russia, as a base for a new conventional framework compatible to its status of a member of the customs union among Russia, Kazakhstan, and Belarus. This was an alternative proposal initially advanced by the Armenian side in September 2014, uh, in, in September, but which the European Union at the time had refused. The political situation in Belarus and the consequent sanctions that the European Union imposed against members of the Lukashenko regime does not allow for a progress in the relations of the country with the European Union, but the country has a minimal participation to the Eastern Partnership. The European Union tries to develop some relations with the opposition and the civil society through the initiative European Dialogue on Modernization of Belarus. But it encounters the regime's reaction. Recently, Belarus has accepted previous European Union proposals and asked for the initiation of negotiations for the visa liberalization process. We support the conclusions of association and free trade agreements with our Eastern partners because their implementation will lead to a common economic space and common value space that expands from the Southeast to the Northwest Europe and can multiply advantages for our countries. Moreover, these agreements will promote the social and economic development of our partners. The conclusion of the agreements does not necessarily constitute the first step towards a full-fledged membership, but as I mentioned before, it does not preclude it. Under current circumstances, the most important thing is the implementation of the agreements after their signing on the 27th of June, which constitute a challenge by itself, given the fact that demands broad-scale structural reforms in a number of sectors, as in finance, in commerce, in justice, etc., as well as a firm commitment to the European Union principles. Our Eastern partners have achieved major results so far, but there are still many things to do, and the European Union will continue to start by their side. Eastern partnership and Southern neighborhood policy have to be equally developed. That uh, sounds like a Mediterranean uh, speaking right now, but nevertheless, it's part, part and parcel. Having in mind that we also have to maintain the current budgetary balance. As far as the Russian reactions are concerned, the European Union has shown its determination to defend principles as territorial integrity, independence, and the viability of the frontiers. This stance should be combined with an attempt to invite Russia to a dialogue, 
in a way to overcome peacefully the current crisis in both short and long term. This policy can have beneficial results not just for the European Union, but for the Eastern partners as well. When it comes to deal with issues of commerce, harmonization of customs, customs uh, uh, con compatibility between association agreements uh, between the European Union and its partners and the customs unions, it is certain that a compromise solution on a technical level can be reached, leaving aside ideological and geopolitical confrontations. But this is for the experts to deal with in depth and in time. Once again, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity and the pleasure to participate in a small way in this conference and to wish you every success to your deliberations. Thank you.